May 25th, 1981 was a Monday just like any other, unless your name was Dan Goodwin, because on that day, Dan decided to scale a skyscraper, the Sears Tower, without any ropes. Oh, and he did it using sky hooks and suction cups, while in a Spider-Man suit he sewed together himself. And while we do not recommend that particular activity, it's definitely an indicator of our fascination with skyscrapers. Since the first one was erected in 1884, also in Chicago and called the Home Insurance Building, the world has been fascinated by these towering and impressive architectural wonders. Let's get into some reasons why skyscrapers are so important. The easiest and most obvious reason why skyscrapers are important is that they provide more space for both residents and workers in cities where space is a rare commodity. As cities began to grow more densely populated in the mid-1800s, a need arose to find places for everyone to go. The big problem at that point was that we hadn't yet figured out the technology to build tall buildings. There were two main sticking points, the logistics of holding these buildings up and the ability to get people up to the top. The first was a basic limitation of architecture at the time. Until the skyscraper era, buildings that were made of standard bricks and mortar rested their weight fully on the base walls. That meant that the higher you built, the thicker you had to make the lower walls. At a certain point, usually around 10 stories, this stopped making sense. Unless you were simply building a tall spire just for aesthetics, there wasn't a logistical way of making a tall building. But everything changed in the late part of the 19th century when iron and steel production hit mass quantities. Not only was there a lot of it, particularly steel, which ended up being the go-to material for skyscrapers, but it could now be made in long beams. This changed everything. Buildings could now rest all their weight on a skeleton of steel beams, which were stronger than bricks and took up a lot less space. Then there was the issue of getting people up and down tall buildings. Of biggest concern was safety. Fortunately, Elisha Otis, a name that became synonymous with elevators, came to the rescue. He invented an elevator safety brake that took out the danger of elevator travel. After he showcased it at an exposition in New York in 1854, builders were off and running, since they knew that particular element of danger had been solved. So the era of tall buildings began, allowing more and more people to live and work in a small space. The same benefit exists today and is the cornerstone of the types of benefits modern skyscrapers bring. But those benefits hardly stop there. In recent years, there's obviously been an awareness and a movement to reverse the effects of climate change and other environmental issues. This also includes trying to reduce overall waste. And at first glance, you might assume that having more and more people in a city would only increase the amount of waste produced. And from the standpoint of things like energy use, skyscrapers certainly use a lot more than the average size building. When people live in a skyscraper, for example, they literally don't have as much space to live in. As such, the building actually fosters a system where there's not only more shared resources, but also an emphasis on optimizing personal resources. AKA, if you don't have a ton of room, you probably buy a lot less stuff, and you probably don't produce as much trash, etc. Then there are the sustainability benefits from the buildings themselves. As the world has focused more and more on sustainability, there's been a push to make sure new construction comes with the latest and greatest in green technology. Sometimes this is simply from the societal and economic pressure to maintain sustainability, and other times it's literally the law. Take Dubai, for example. It's seen a rapid growth in skyscrapers over the last couple of decades and has strict guidelines about sustainability practices for any new construction. So all of the modern skyscrapers there, including the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa, have impressive green technology built in, making them incredibly sustainable. Of course, it's also in vogue to show off the fact that your building, and by extension your city, has a focus on environmental sustainability. And in that vein, there are other, more superficial reasons why skyscrapers are so popular these days, aka they look cool. Because the world's economy has become globalized, there is a lot more pressure on major cities to attract businesses, residents, and tourists. And there's something to be said for the aesthetics of a gorgeous skyline, replete with shining skyscrapers. Major urban centers are stuck in somewhat of a keeping up with the Joneses scenario, where they want to compete with their neighbors by erecting more and more of the world's tallest buildings. Plus, it's a great marketing tactic to be able to boast that you have the tallest building in the world or even that you have plans drawn for a future tallest building. And yes, it might feel superficial in some ways, but there's legit competition for tourism, residency, and foreign investment around the world. 
So having a gorgeous skyline with plenty of skyscrapers is, in reality, pretty persuasive. Speaking of persuasion, we would love to gently persuade you to subscribe to our channel. We can't offer you a penthouse apartment in a skyscraper, but we do have a lot of fun and informative videos. And the move to entice people to live in your city isn't simply to recruit foreign investment or global citizenry. For many cities around the world, there was a steady trend of urban flight happening in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. People in major metropolises began to see the appeal of the local suburbs and more rural areas outside of cities. Both options meant more space, and usually for a lot less money. But with the advent of more and more skyscrapers, there's been an increase in overall living space available in cities, and it started to bring people back from living in the burbs. This includes younger workers who want to live near their work, as well as to be near the action in general, and older folks who might enjoy the hassle-free experience of renting versus owning a property outside of the city. Once you're back living in a city and perched up in your new skyscraper apartment, the benefits continue. Because while we usually think about skyscrapers in terms of their overall look in a city skyline, or what the building looks like from the outside, some of the true beauty comes from the view you get from inside. Being that high up over a city and its surrounding region allows for views that are often breathtaking. And if you think about it, people climb the world's tallest mountains, risking their lives, for a chance to see incredible panoramas from the peak. Skyscrapers offer a similar experience simply by taking an elevator to the top. But the additional benefits cover more than simply the views. There's a phenomenon known as urban agglomeration or having a close physical proximity between competing or even unrelated industries can have net positive effects. It can result in what's known as a knowledge spillover. Simply being near your competitor, which is made easier by the existence of skyscrapers offering more office space, can drive competition more. Competitors are more likely to notice and pick up on the actions and the discoveries of their rivals and both incorporate and build on it. This can happen even in unrelated industries as well. Simply being in a densely populated area with a ton of people and businesses has shown to drive innovation in many industries. And more industries are able to survive and thrive in cities where there is literally more space for them to operate. And there are cities around the globe that, for basic geographical reasons, aren't able to simply build out further and further. Places like Singapore, for example, are intensely crowded without any room to expand laterally. So, the natural solution is to build upwards. This is also helpful for landowners in these cities because they're able to offer more residential or commercial space without having to buy more land. And a taller building with more retail or residential space certainly offers the potential for a lot more income for the owners of the land. But it's not just good for a few landowners. Skyscrapers have a lot of economic benefits for the cities that build them. For starters, it's advantageous for the operation of a city to have people living in close proximity to where they work, go out, etc. It cuts down on overall public transportation costs, if nothing else. And if you have less of a strain on public transportation, that results in fewer things like carbon emissions. So that's yet another way that skyscrapers are good for the environment. Plus, reduced need for public transport can also cut down on general infrastructure costs for the city meaning that money can be shifted to other sectors in need. And if you live in a skyscraper, it can be a means to more overall affordable living. Most skyscrapers are built in city centers, meaning they're often surrounded by all the services, shopping options, etc. that people need. For many residents, that means they can completely bail on having a car in the first place. That means no expenses for gas, repairs, insurance, car payments, and so on. And there are also many affordable housing programs that utilize space inside skyscrapers. The sheer volume of units available can be taken advantage of to drive prices down and allow certain affordable housing programs to thrive. And speaking of thriving, there was a 2019 study published in the Creativity Research Journal that found that workers at a building designed in a particular style called Maharishi Vastu architecture were 50 to 80 percent more creative than when they worked in a more standard drab building. So in theory, people living and working in skyscrapers built in modern artistic fashions might even get the benefit of being more creative while they're there. And when you add that to the incredible view, the appeal is obvious. Skyscraper technology continues to wow us, and I'm sure it won't be long before we're building them into outer space. At least, that's what happened in a dream I recently had. Whether or not that comes true, the world will continue to be fascinated by these amazing feats of engineering and architecture. 
Have any thoughts about the importance of skyscrapers? Pop them in the comments section below.